I wanted to talk a, a, a little bit about, I know we haven't really talked that much about atheism today, but uh, mm -hmm. my skepticism and atheism kind of are, are intermingled in a way that I couldn't really separate them. Um, so I spent, I grew up, raised uh, Catholic in Massachusetts um, and spent, I would say, from about the age of 14 until my mid-30s kind of figuring all of that out, figuring out where I stood and everything. Um, I would say that I wasn't a Catholic by the age of 20, but I was still a Christian, um, but I, I started questioning all those different things. Uh, and, I, and I was early on separating the question about religion from just being all-encompassing, which I think a lot of religious people do, to being, is there a God? If so, is that God good? Also, is religion a good thing? Um, and so I, I was asking a lot of questions, and I was surrounding myself with people who were asking questions of me, which I thought I think is a good thing. Um, I had uh, I dated girl had girlfriends who, when my mom would make them go to church with us on Christmas, they'd be like, "Why is this going on?" Because some of them were ever Catholic. Uh, the big question I always think is funny is. My first girlfriend asked, why does the priest have an entourage? <laughs> and so, so I spent uh, all that time kind of getting slowly questioned on it. And, and um, finally, in my mid-30s, I was holding on a little bit to the idea of heaven more than God, which is the opposite of what most atheists that I've talked to say. Um, to me, heaven was the idea that I was going to get to meet grandparents that had died before I was born. So that was like that was more of a easy thing to, or it's more of a difficult thing to let go of than the idea of God. Um, and then I finally acknowledged to myself and said it out loud that I was an atheist. And at that point, it felt a little bit like I had hit the end of the journey. And and I think that that's where my my skepticism started to fail, is because I thought that I had gotten there. And so I stopped being skeptical for a little while. I, 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 luckily, I still have friends that, that pushed me on other things. Um, and so I, I, I started to kind of become, you know, I think when we change, change belief systems, I think there's a bit of a pendulum anyway. I was very arrogant about, well, I'm, I understand that there's no God, so I must be right about these other things. And then it, you take, a little bit of a step back after after about a, a year or two, and, and I think it starts to settle, and I was able to start thinking critically again. And and when I did that, um, I started. Th you know, this was by the time I get to that stage, we were at the beginning of COVID, um, and I was not seeing people, and so I was like, I want to start having conversations. Um, so I started the talking about the big stuff podcast with. Um, not initially with Matthew, uh, who couldn't be here today because of political uh, political rally, but he, um, but uh, uh, quickly he came on to help me. And one of the things that we do is we talk every week about a different big life topic. So this past week when we recorded, we talked about anger, um, and we kind of try to come at that with with a sense of like, okay, here's how we're gonna, how, here's the natural way that we react to it, but. Why are we, you know, in what ways are we maybe missing the boat here? Um, we've talked about masculinity, and we've talked uh, fairly recently about when a political topic should outweigh the economy and how we can talk to our friends and family who are, who are more you know, economically focused than we are. Um, so we try to, try to start giving, um, I would say it's more philosophical than, we're not talking about concrete right and wrong or yes and no. Uh, scientific things, but we are talking about things that are, you know, important to us. And, and I think that one of the reasons why I wanted to do that is, while I'm a big consumer of skeptical and atheist media, a lot through podcasts and YouTube, um, there's a lot of it that is seems to be focused on a few key areas. And so my hope was that in doing this, I could start to bring that the, that way of thinking to other topics that maybe aren't getting uh, getting that treatment, at least not in a, in a wide, wider sense. So I, you know, a lot of my friends and family who are listening to, to us every week are Christians, and they're hearing us talk about things that, 
from a perspective that they've never thought about. The masculinity episode, other than a couple of friends, our masculinity episode that we did, I think it was episode three, two years ago, it, it was wild to most of my friends and family, other than like two or three people. Um, and the idea there was like, you know, we don't have that traditional sense of masculinity, and so like, what, and, and why do people get hung up on it? And so we broke that down, and I, it was, like I said, I think it was episode three, and I immediately got questions from people saying like, oh, you know, I would never have thought about that that way. And, and that's my hope is that we can connect with, with um, people and get people thinking because prior to meeting, well, Matthew's the first person that I had met who was in a, you know, he, he brought me into uh, Triangle Free Thought, but before him I had met atheists, but that were just kind of, had come to that conclusion and weren't activists about it. And now I am, I feel like I've, I've connected with the community a bit, um, especially through listening to podcasts. And um, yeah, um, so I s spoke fast for the last So, um, so we've got, yeah. Is, Do you want to take what's called the big, sure. big stuff? Not the big Talking stuff. about the big stuff. Talking about the big stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I did want to say also, um, when you mentioned the not having voices, uh, I don't have um, pictures in my head. That was a topic that we went over really? on the podcast. Uh, so if I were to say, think of your mom. Nothing. Um, Sorry. So it was, it, uh, there was a, it's called Aphantasia. Yeah, Aphantasia, um, yeah. And, and, uh, and I found out about it from watching the Space Force TV show with Steve Carell. Uh, and they mentioned it, and I paused the show, and my wife, and I said to my wife, do you actually see pictures in your head? And she was like, yeah, you don't? And I'm like, no, I don't. And, and we did, we looked it up, we found a test. If you close your eyes, try to picture like something very simple, a red apple or a red t-shirt. Uh, if you can picture it, you don't have it. And I see the lights, you know, kind of through my eyelids a little bit. That's about it. Wow. Um, and it was, that was a huge part of our, of our first four hours. Wow, well, thanks for sharing that. That's good. Wow. I do, and actually, sometimes when I'm really tired and kind of going in and out, um, I know that I'm going in and out because pictures turn on and off. So, like, I'll be like, "Oh, I'm I'm dreaming about something, you know, one of the dogs or something," and there there are images in my head, and and then when I wake up ten seconds later, I'm still kind of groggy. I'm like, "Oh, I saw them, so I was asleep." But you can't pull up that image now. But I cannot pull up an image. There's, there's another phenomenon. Um, when I tell you to picture today, like to picture a date on a calendar, what do you see? Calendar. So if I tell you picture May 25th, do you look, see the word May in 25? Or do you actually see a calendar? I see a calendar. Because I see a calendar physically that's in a circle in front of me. Oh. And that's very, very rare that people will do that. Like I'm, when I'm picking out a date, I visualize the calendar spinning around. Do you visualize calendars? I, I you don't can't visualize pictures. Uh, what, what are your memories? Like how do you? <laughs> so it, it can be difficult. So like my wife gets really frustrated with me because I don't remember the color of my house because we've now talked about it so much that I've gotten like five different mental notes mixed up. So like I think it's. I think it's like a light gray, a little bit lighter than the concrete, but I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's the color. But I've also thought it was yellow because I have to make mental notes of things to like, like the, it, sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's like okay, um, if I, especially if I'm if I know I'm gonna need to recall it later, I can be like, oh yeah, Coke has a red label on it, and I'll make, remember that for later. But a lot of times it's it's uh, your, your memory recall is it's text. In, in, yeah, but I don't see the words. I have to actually think the words. Think the words. Yeah. So you like if you went on vacation, you don't have any visual memory of no. where you were or what you did. Take a lot of I have a pretty good sense of space, um, which is I think weird, but I think that's partly because, um, like especially like when I was a little kid, if I wanted to get up and get a drink in the middle of the night, I would do it in the dark and I could, I couldn't see anything, so I just would count the number of steps. Hmm. So I think I've, you know, the way we would do with anything else, I've adapted to it because I didn't learn I had this thought I was 36 years old. Right, you already. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel like you're sitting out? <clears throat> um, sometimes, uh, yeah. I, I wish that, like, um, you know, I've I've had some worries. Like, there's things that 
times in my life where I had taken photos and I've lost them because I didn't realize that I was, you know, old Facebook photos from an old account when I was, you know, 20 years old. Delete, deleted the account, not thinking I would need them again, and now I'm like, oh, I don't remember much of that time. Like, I remember the events, but I don't remember any of the mental, yeah. the, the imagery. Have you ever, sorry. Well, hold on before we. Mental reasoning or uh, spatial reasoning tasks where you have to like rotate the shape in your mind to get the right answer. Have you ever tried those? No. No, that might be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I get I mean, certain when it comes to when it comes to instructions, I uh, multi-step things. I have a difficult time sometimes, and I think that's because I can't recall it. So I have to. Um, it's for me. It's kind of the way like when you're trying to remember a phone number and you keep repeating the phone number. That's how I have to remember most things. So. What about faces? So, One last thing. Yeah. I'm going to take a, a guess. Yeah. Um, based on what I know about facial recognition, that you're able to recognize faces basically normally. Yeah. Um, if I well, I sometimes yeah. I, I I don't have any as far as I'm aware. I don't have any facial recognition issues. Um, sometimes I can't always place a name with a face, yeah. and there's like other things, but I, I think that's falls within pretty normal. Pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michael, yeah. thank you so much. So this much. is really yeah. fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really very good to meet you.